Hey, we're back. And for this one, I wanted to get into some experimental analysis and data analysis. And something that's really important when you're in some kind of lab and you're making multiple measurements of multiple quantities. It, um, the example I'll use today, for example, is uh, speed. If you want to find the speed of, a, say, a rolling ball or something coming past you, you'd want to measure distance and time. Uh, now, when you're doing this and you're, you're making multiple measurements, and then you're going to use those measurements to actually calculate the result. And, um, you might be adding or subtracting two measurements to get a result, or maybe you're multiplying or dividing the measurements to get a result, like for speed. Speed will be distance divided by time. Um, how do you figure out what the uncertainty is, what that plus or minus is on the result? Okay. Um, how well will we know the speed, knowing that there's no such thing as a perfect measurement? In anything you measure, whether it's with a, a cheap little ruler, you know, uh, that you buy at the store, or a multi-million dollar machine, kind of like I used to play with over at Fermilab, every measurement you ever make in human history is going to have a plus or minus on it. It'll have an uncertainty. There's only so many decimal points you can you can measure something to, and then beyond that you're just guessing really. So how how can you use these imperfect measurements to calculate a result, and then figure out well how how well do we know that result? How, how do you combine the uncertainties of the measurements to get the uncertainty of the result? That's something that we call propagation of uncertainty. And for the speed example, we keep it. Relatively simple. In high school, um, many of the labs that we do in, in any class will involve either multiplying or dividing measurements to get some answer out. Um, speed is a, a prime example of this. So here we're, we're dividing, and we can assume that um, we made the measurements. We, we measured off some distance. We we're going to measure the time. And usually, for something like time, if you're using a stopwatch, you're going to do multiple trials. You, know, you want to always do trials if you can for, for different measurements. But anyhow, um, in, in, we use some notation for this. What I circled here is d plus or minus delta d, t average minus delta t. Okay, so it's assuming that we, we chose a distance, that's the d, and then there's a plus or minus to it. Okay, if, you're, if you're using a meter stick, Maybe you put on plus or minus one millimeter. That, that's how well we can measure with the meter stick. And then time, the average time, if, if we assume we're doing some number of trials, we want to use the average in our calculation. But there's going to be some uncertainty to that, especially with stopwatches. If you do multiple trials, you're always going to get some spread in those times. Now, the result itself, the actual speed, is simple. It's just the, the distance you measured divided by that average time. But, like I like to argue with my students, that, that's all fine and good, and it's very easy to get that result. But the most important part of this is what's the uncertainty? If it's a huge uncertainty, then you know if you have a huge range of possible speed, you really don't have a clue as to what the real speed is. Um, so you, you have to have a measure. You have to quantify the uncertainty in, in that result. This might look kind of strange if you've never seen anything like this before, but um, this, this little the, the circled rule here <laughs> is uh, valid for any time you multiply or divide measurements to get a result. And it's called adding the fractional uncertainties in quadrature. A lot of fancy words there. Under the square root here, you notice here's the delta d, and here's the uncertainty in time, which if you did trials, technically would be your standard deviation of the time. That's something we can actually calculate. These are called fractional uncertainties. Okay. What, what percentage, what fraction of the distance is the uncertainty, the plus or minus in it? Over here, what's the, the fractional uncertainty in time? Okay, what, what percentage, what fraction is the, um, of the time average 
is your standard deviation, or that plus or minus the, the average time. Yeah. So we're squaring those. It looks a lot like Pythagorean theorem. And the derivation of this comes from that. We use this for what we call independent measurements when we're using different tools to make the two measurements. Well, we're going to combine those fractional uncertainties and quadrature here, and then multiply whatever that number is by the speed result. And that whole combination, that multiplication process, tells us what the plus or minus on the velocity is. Okay. So it's really just kind of plug and chug. It, it looks messy. We have symbols, so it looks worse than what it probably is. But we really can just kind of plug and chug numbers in there. And so I just made some up just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So a real simple uh, experiment that a lot of physics classes do for speed is you just you know, roll something off a ramp. On, on the tabletop, you, you measure off a distance. Okay, that's your D, let's say it's half a meter. Um, let's say you do some number of time trials and the average time is 0.62 seconds. We would calculate the standard deviation for time trials. Okay, this is our definition for standard deviation here. Again, just kind of plug and chug to, to get this number out. Let's say it turns out to be 0 0.04 seconds. Well, how, how do you get the uncertainty on the distance? You know, this is something uh, different people will, will have different answers here. It's something that you usually don't like calculate, like a standard deviation. You just have the meter stick sitting there and half a meter. What a lot of people do is, is kind of think about, well, how, how big is the ball? How, how big is your object? Maybe it's a little marble or something that's rolling on the tabletop. And let's say it's maybe, maybe a centimeter in diameter, rel relatively small little ball. Well, when, because you know, if you're doing this in a lab, you, you're trying to eyeball that ball. Like when, when does it get to the half meter mark? And when it gets there, You know, since you're doing this by eye, so it's, it's, it's flying past you at the speed that we're trying to measure, we're trying to calculate. Um, you know, did, did you stop the stopwatch when the front edge of, of the ball got there, or was it the back edge, somewhere in between? So you're going to hear people say, uh, uh, what's a reasonable estimate of how well you can measure the position of that moving object as it goes by you? Um, a lot of people would say, okay, well, maybe just use like the diameter of the ball or maybe the radius of the ball. So if it's a one centimeter um, ball, may maybe we choose one centimeter or 0 0.01 meters. That's the plus or minus. Since we don't know exactly what part of the ball actually is, is at the half meter mark when we're timing it, okay, when we stop the stopwatch. So that, that would be a reasonable estimate. It's just what's kind of the size? How, how well can we measure that? Um, as it goes past. So with those numbers, here's what it looks like when you plug it into to that quadrature thing. <laughs> okay, out front is, is the result, okay, your distance divided by average time. That turns out to be 0.81 uh, meters per second. And here's, here's what's inside that square root. Here's the quadrature part. Um, here, here's that reasonable estimate of distance uncertainty. Um, one centimeter divided by the 50 centimeter distance. We're going to square that. Here's the standard deviation of time over the, the average time. The, the average time's fractional uncertainty. We square that. Plug it all into your calculator, and out comes 0 0.054 meters per second. So what we report, um, like if, if you're doing a lab report or something, for the speed of that ball, would be the speed result, distance divided by time, plus or minus this result that we got by the propagation of uncertainty, by combining the uncertainties of distance and time to get the uncertainty in, in the speed of the ball. Okay. And it, notice it's relatively small. It, it's under 10% of the result. It's probably around the range that you'd expect to get like in a high school lab with, with stopwatches and all that. Um, and so this is, just, this is just one way we can do it whenever you're multiplying or dividing measurements to get a result. So I hope this helps. Um, we'll be doing this a few times. Certainly my classes will, will do this from time to time. And then until next time, uh, we'll see you later.